D N T show is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advice. Live long and prosper, bitches. Friends with benefits. <laughs> Speaking of having a good time, Terry. Mm-hmm. Dayton broke <laughs> the GNT show. This is now the David Mack <laughs> Appreciation <laughs> Hour. You asshole. <laughs> what is it about this guy that people love him so much? With his purple velvet cape and his crown. I thought it was a little much when he had us carry him in the studio on a throne. I have lost them! Look what I have done! Look what I have brought upon the world! There is an urge to go nyan 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 nyan. I heard rumors that you might be working on something else, but we won't pry much. <laughs> I'm going to say it. I'm going to pry a little. <laughs> dare you? How dare you ask me to change it? Do you not understand the majesty of my genius? <laughs> and the guy sitting next to me looked at me like he was, you know, like I'd crapped in his hat. Yeah, it's the professionalism yeah. that sells the show. That's right. Welcome to another GNT Supplemental Log. Joel Launcher, everybody. This is Gettysburg 7. How are you doing? How do you be? There she is to my left, your right, dressing in her, her, her commander's outfit because of tonight's topic. It's Command Lieutenant Commander Terry Lynn. Hello. Hey, everybody. And sitting over there, Mike, please leave your and go back to your normal spot. You are not sitting between our guests this week. There Adrian he is. is and his, no, the no. There he reason. is. There he is in his Klingon tuck tuxedo with blood red cummerbund ceridium Kapla. now go back over <laughs> don't make me have the union guys help you <laughs> and we have two special guests this week first uh should i go with the first timer or the the kind of sort of uh, irregular regular go, go with, with the, the kind of sort of irregular go regular pro. go with the pro, uh, go with the pro. She looking absolutely stunning dressed in her romulan stow outfit it's adrian hello how are you doing thank you for having me oh joe lantro and for her first time in the studio wearing her long black dress with the kitty ears it's the lovely janice meow hey. Perfect. <laughs> hi janice oh, welcome dear. both of you yes welcome well, thank you we we wanted to say thank you uh, in advance because you know how we can get um when the squirrels get loose uh, so we'll thank you ahead of time <laughs> for coming and joining us on on this week's supplemental log um mike and you guys put together a great idea about doing the supplemental log now that we're on the press Precipice. I love that word. Precipice of um, just don't fall over. Yeah, really. Of <laughs> uh, of heading to Star Trek Las Vegas. Fifty some days. I know. I can't believe it. The Ferris anomaly is getting ready to head to the Albuquerque and. Uh, the caravan's getting all ready, and we're, we're Tra- Karen messaged me earlier, and we were talking about it, and Sue one of two, yeah, everybody's ready. They've announced a whole bunch of new people, and of course the GNT show's uh, booth <laughs> keeps getting bigger, and um, <laughs> we we decided <laughs> to bring it's on the width of the booth, not the length. <laughs> and and we were just de- and we decided that Adrian, being the the con and cosplay experienced person, and also Janice, who experienced your first Star Trek Las Vegas convention mentioned last year would would give us a great balance to talk about what people can expect from a convention and the advice you two can both give to pros and amateurs alike so welcome per- both of you and particularly also because uh people say you know oh i'm i'm shy i don't approach people well we have somebody in here that can help you with that <laughs> adrian it's not no, adrian. just kidding yeah, it's not adrian <laughs> but i can help i can help too yes you can. yes but you're not the shy one <laughs> so that's Mikey. Oh, that's true too. That's that is true too. Yes. That's very sweet. Do I have to sit in between you two? Well, I think you'd want to anyway. We can do Don't even pretend like it's a pain. Googly eyes. <laughs> we'll I know what's happening here. <laughs> so we I guess talk. my first question to both of you ladies is going to be uh, now, uh, I guess more or less your, well, how do I say this now? The listeners, I fucked this up entirely. So the listeners Oh, there's know the one. First one of the night. The first one of the night. Janice, your first convention was last year correct that's correct okay and adrian how many star trek conventions have you been to before uh 
for well, four Vegas her? ones, two Burbank ones, two, two San Francisco ones, I think. Okay. And you've gone to other cons as well, like comic cons or oh, yeah. Wizard like I, yeah. yeah, I'd probably say like uh, the, the number I still haven't hit yet as far as genre goes uh, with regards to Star Trek. I haven't matched the number of anime conventions I've been to, comic conventions I've been to. I've been to far more comic and anime ones. Um, okay. I'd say probably you, anime conventions were, uh, where I first started getting really, uh, well, I became more than just a participant. I started doing cosplay at anime conventions first. Uh, comic conventions, I was working them. First. Well, you know, I'm walking around as well. By uh, working them, what do you mean? Yeah, right, you know. <laughs> Uh, Down boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I worked for a um, uh, for a number of years. A comic book come at also oh. live events. So that's that was a lot of what we did. Um, but the first convention I participated in. Yeah, I've, I've actually been all over the West Coast. A lot of different anime conventions. At all. <laughs> Uh, you keep cutting in and out, so yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. But, uh. Yeah, Adrian, your your mic. Well, don't worry, we can edit this out. Um, your your mic keeps popping in and out. Are you on push to talk or? No, let me check. Um, no, I'm on voice activation detected. Maybe I should do continuous. I think yeah. Go ahead and pick up. I would think continuous is okay. Okay, that's I'm on continuous now. Is that any better at all? That's much better. Better. So good. Okay. Okay. I can uh, almost hear the B. I could I could repeat any of that if you wanted or shorten it even. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> No, we, we. I know that you've got a lot of experience in uh, in in cosplaying at anime and other comic book conventions. But you're also a live action role player, are you not? You're involved in the LARPing community. Yeah, I do both. Um, to me, it's all the same when I'm playing a character. I like to make uh, a fictional world come to life as much as possible. It's all in the name of creating um, entertainment uh, for people to enjoy and to make our dreams a reality. See, so just getting as close to that as we can, so we can. Enjoy Enjoy each other's dreams. So, and might I say, you were absolutely Marvel wonderful Marvel. as Dar Schluga on TV last year. <laughs> you know, as Dar Schluga at the Vegas Con, the, the comp- costume competition, you were like one of the runner-ups, weren't you? Uh, I got third place. Third place. Yeah. That's still very awesome. You got robbed. Right? Oh, yeah. You got robbed. <laughs> there, there were a thousand entries? Or? Oh, I don't I don't know. I don't know how many entries they had. I don't think there were a thousand. No, there, I don't think there was that many, but I think maybe hundreds, but I could be wrong. It was a really long line. What was, That's the cost- all I know. what was the costume <laughs> record last year? It was over a thousand. Like. Oh, the costume record's different from the contest, though. Yeah. Um, the oh. contest didn't have that many people, but the uh, competition, I don't remember what the number was, and then I heard there was a scandal. So. Yes, there's Ooh, a scandal yeah. regarding the world record. Yeah, so. Oh. Uh, it, 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 London still technically holds it because creation didn't count it correctly or have somebody on hand from Guinness or something. I thought they did have a Guinness person and and a proper counter, but like maybe some people got in there that weren't supposed to. I don't know. Anyway. Well, they had turned away Flynn Stowe outfits but then, yeah. but then CBS said, uh, "No, that's officially licensed. Right. That that counts." Maybe that was the issue. Uh, you know what was also interesting was that because I was in the contest in the uh, the uh, semifinals, um, because we were already in that same theater where they were going to count everybody, they told us just to stay there. And I'm like, but I'm not playing a canon character. I'm a Ferengi character I created. And yes, there are not a lot of female Ferengi characters on Star Trek. Still, like, validly, I don't even know if I should have counted, even though I got trapped yes, in there, basically. Shut up. So, I don't know. Don't but, dare. yeah, but as my Stowe character, I could count because, yes, uh, CBS Paramount have approved of Stowe uh, right. elements. Yeah. Oh, is that the purple Romulan? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that purple, that purple Romulan outfit was pretty cool. Now, uh, the, there's a big thing this year, though, that they're doing at this year's convention that they've never done prior in prior years, and that is they're really putting a whole focus on cosplay for the attendees at the convention mm-hmm. this year. Um, what's your take on that, Adrian? Well, I, uh, I, from what I read on the website, it looks like they're going to hold themed group uh, photo shoots at different times. And then you look at your schedule and you can see which one you want to enter. So it gives you time to plan what costume you want to wear for, for what group photo shoot. 
Uh, they may have a themed background for it. They may not. I don't know. But uh, it looks like they've brought in a couple other people to talk about um, costuming, makeup, things like that. So I think they might have expanded the schedule with a couple other related events, as well as just simply calling it Cosplay Appreciation Day helps put more spotlight on that hobby and uh, and passion. So and um, in the vendors room, I think there's going to be a cosplay area. Well, there, there's Garrick's Tale. Garrick's. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's not it's not in character, but that would be really cool if someone was there playing Garrick in character. Wouldn't oh my it? Gosh. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Oh, squeeze. I would never <laughs> leave that area of Garrick. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, Garrick's hot. He is. He's hot. I, I agree. Think he's hot. So I would love to, you know, have him sizing me up for some new clothes. That's pretty cool. Um, but on, you know, less personal things, I think See, it's I'm so constrained very cool. because Janice is here. I can't volunteer for that job. <laughs> yeah. Janice is being so patient. I, I know. <laughs> She uh, cosplay last year uh, she did. as well. Well, she I want to yeah. say, I'm going to have to, since they're going to do the, the group type thing, I'm going to have to get with Darnell and Ella uh, and, and all of my scant buddies and see if we don't get a scant group together. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Now, I have a question for I scant Janice. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Janice, <laughs> even though last year was your first Star Trek convention, you actually went and you did cosplay on not just one, but a couple of days when you were there. Did you find yourself kind of, I don't know, frightened a little bit about going to your first convention and undertaking cosplay at the same time? Um, I would think I was more intimidated about going to the convention than about doing any cosplay, to be honest really? with you. She, yeah, I, she could use it as a way of hiding? Is that hiding in plain sight? Kind of? <laughs> No, I no? I don't think that it's really that. I think with my um, virtual world personas and doing voiceovers and hosting virtual modeling shows and being um, a content designer, the cosplay stuff I can I can jump that bridge so to speak. It's um, a People. comfort area instead okay. of a fear base. Whereas walking around the Star Trek conference uh, um, convention as somebody that's really shy is utterly terrifying. Yeah. But I will say that the the Vulcan persona that you you created last year does help with that because you you, you got into that character not at the level that April gets into her Andorian character. Um, <laughs> Good lord, that's <laughs> frightening. But um, but it did help because you you were in that character. Uh, it's a natural character for me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> cool. Well, it, it 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 it's a good information for some of our listeners who may be attending their first convention and their first Star Trek convention is to know that you know how did you feel you know comfort wise after you got there? Did you find the people very accepting and comforting, or did you what what pieces of it did did you find most disconcerting? Um, most disconcerting, um, it, just being around lots of people. Um, yeah. As a shy person, that is, that, that's probably the scariest thing. I think when we first got there, I, I hid behind Mikey for uh, a great while uh -huh. until Nick told me it's time to go upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but I also think too that um, having time to just kind of read the schedule and find where I kind of belonged mm -hmm. is probably the most helpful side of that. And uh, for our listeners, so you know, uh, Janice found pieces of the conference uh, or pieces of the convention that really thing to her, I would say. Would you Would you agree with that? The science space. And they, we, they don't, those don't get talked about a lot either because the stars are usually the story. Right. Most people don't know that there's usually one, if not more, tracks of panels that are put on at any given convention, and this year will be no exception. But you attended a lot of the science-based uh, panels last year. I attended all of the science-based. There, there, there really wasn't a whole lot of it, sad to say. Yeah. Uh, and I wish that there was more. Some some of it was kind of showy, and um, but it was interesting nonetheless. Um, but then there was some of it that was just really deep uh, past your elbows. And um, for somebody that likes science or is a science geek, it's like a jewel ass, a jewel list. Um, nice. So, yeah, that's that's my niche area. I like that. It, it was comforting. I was around a bunch of other shy, geeky people that are terrified being around lots of people. Camaraderie <laughs> does a lot for you. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, yeah. It's, it's, and the Geek it's Girls true. panel you enjoyed, right? Um, eh, not really. <laughs> really? Sorry. Well, wait I think a you enjoyed that one. Well, <laughs> well this year... It's because it's Mary Shawinsky. Yeah, no, well. no, 
it's because, um, you know, it, perspective. Yeah. Well, I think that it's just overrated, to be honest with you. I'd really, I, I know that there are women issues and, you know, there's lots of different perspectives and, and different things that you could talk about in relation to Star Trek. But in the society and the world that we live in, the last thing I really want to discuss is, you know, um, how women are not portrayed fairly or, you know, those kind of issues. I'd rather talk about something that was more positive. Yeah, well, I think it's good to have the panel there, or rather the topic there. Um, right. I think there's a lot of people who show up to the convention who never get a chance to talk about it or who don't know that there's people who will support them. Uh, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, having positive things there is good. And, and I mean, on both sides of it, uh, there are sexist issues um, for men and, and women, though women, I think that's the majority of what I see when it comes to sci-fi and fantasy movies, uh, not doing what I think that they could be doing or, you know, that, that they have the resources to do and don't use them. Um, right. So I think a lot of that is really good to have. Uh, I noticed that that panel, it, it pops up every convention. Uh, right. I believe by the same, um, the same people with Mary heading it up. And, uh, and I, and I'm actually curious, I haven't attended it yet. I'm curious if the numbers go down each convention as people get educated or, you know, uh, or just aren't in the mood to discuss that, which I think it's really important, but, um, it, it all depends on what you feel you want to do with your convention experience or if those numbers go up, uh, especially now with the whole yes, all women hashtag that's been going on. I'm, I'm just curious to see how the panel is going to go this time. And, and what their topics of conversation are, because in my experience, I've seen them kind of touch on very, very specific, you know, issues with regards to just how women are portrayed specifically in Star Trek. And then sometimes um, they speak more generally about how women and, 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 and equality, and I don't want to say just women, but it matters of equality and how we treat each other and how we do as a group sometimes tend to, like any other sector of society, split off into groups of elitists and whatnot. Remember the whole fake geek girl controversy that came up, mm -hmm. you oh, know, yeah. a couple of years ago that they touched on. And and it, I think that the Geek Girls panel is one of those panels that is, is open and has probably oh. more freedom Sorry. to touch on a, a wide variety of issues with regards to equal treatment than you know, if we threw a bunch of guys up there and said, let's talk about it that way. I would like to see a more involved, you know, multi or, or yeah, multi-gendered panel. An open yeah, that would be. Panel. And yeah. sorry, I have to stop pushing the button because I'm so used to doing it. I'm watching the Rangers, Kings, Stanley Cup finals. Oh, dude, don't. Okay, just very quietly. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, though. I want to ask Janice what she thought of, um, of that panel, if there was something in it that really ir either irritated you uh, um, or that you didn't feel was being. Um, something maybe that was missed that wasn't covered or something they covered that you really were glad that they covered? Um, to be honest with you, uh, I, I can only go from memory because it wasn't like one of the things that I would say was a highlight for me. Mm -hmm. um, and and that, that's not dissing on them. It's just that that's just the way it is. Um, right. You asked me. Different strokes my, for different folks. Right. My right. highlight was the science thing. That that really was. I was tickle pink. I came away with posters. The guy she signed came them back for up me. And woke me up I was to tell totally me how great geeking it was. out. <laughs> Um, I, I would rather have a signature from what we were calling Dr. Muppet than any of the movie stars. I mean, it, it's just that, that was just Nick my area. That was calling him that. No, no. The, yeah. Janet called him that. I mean, Janice called him oh. that first. Uh, so, so anyway, um, but, you know, from what I recall from listening to them, it's just me personally. Uh, it's not that those topics are uncomfortable. It's just that I am immersed in that because I deal with legal yeah. issues at where I work. I'm not a lawyer, but I deal with anything that has to do with compliance, risk assessments, and all of that kind of stuff. So I end up getting involved with anything that has to do with um, that topic in particular. <sighs> And so sitting at a convention and listening to it, I think it's more related to, oh, God, here we go. I really don't well, want to like hear this. It's more like your job. It's more like your work and you're here not to work. Exactly. Right. And, and the other thing is, okay. is that, you know, I've been um, a girl that plays games and I've been, you know, I don't necessarily consider myself to be a geek girl per se, but yeah. um, I do the alpha testing and the beta testing and, and all of that crazy stuff. And, um, you know, I know that they're discussing a lot of those issues issues about what people think we look like versus what we really do look like and um, pretty in a brain. Oh my God, that's kind of crazy. And um, 
And, you know, but the reality is, is if you're talking about sci-fi, fantasy or gaming, um, women are not ever going to be dressed with, you know, full warrior mode unless, I mean, like there are just few exceptions. And the topic is just kind of beaten to death, no matter which world you go to or which blog that you attend, that it, it just, it, it's that way. So um, I, I just feel like it's just tired. Maybe if there was a way to spice it up or um, a to different way to... Active, instead of yeah. Just, uh, not just a discussion, but also something more active. So yeah. at least, I mean, that's the way I feel about it. But I totally, I understand where you're coming from. I do. Actually, on, on the science level, they do have the uh, JPL Sci-Fi, Sci-Fi Influences um, Science Panel. So they t- they're going to be talking about that, which I'm you're guessing you're probably going to go to because it's a science panel. But it looked yes. really interesting. So, yeah. Have they already discussed their covered. topics this year? I mean, do um, they, have they already particularly released Particularly under or? that? I, I don't know. It's just, it's a few Hold people on, from check. JPL. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. So, it's and I also want to I, I want to take this moment too. We're we are talking about uh, Star Trek Las Vegas, but if you if you have never been to a convention and you want to get your feet wet in something not quite as big, there are also so many conventions. Like at the same time that STLV is going on, the week before is Comic Con, and that's just too big. Um, but like Shore Leave <laughs> will be going on in Baltimore, which is a small independent convention. Uh, I, I'm sure, Adrian, out there in California, there's conventions all over the place, small and, and yeah. different horror, anime, comic book, sci fi. Yeah. There's supernatural. There's, mm-hmm. there's Twilight conventions. I mean, and I'm not going to diss on that because if that's your thing, that's your thing. Right. And if oh, you can get together in a community fandom. like that, yeah. If it, where's the Ghostbusters conventions? But anyway. Um, well, like any if prep you, we're doing here applies to any convention, basically. I'm, right. I mean, we're spotlighting certain things that, of course, uh, are, are unique to the Star Trek conventions. And that's cool. Um, and, and I'm sure people would want to know, but I know a few people who've been dying to go. So maybe this uh, this this podcast, this supplement is going to be perfect for them. Um, you know, it's a good it's a good update on what's to come and how to prep for it. And uh, well, but yeah, the base stuff we're talking about that absolutely any convention you can just take uh, the uh, the preparation stuff that I'm sure we're going to dive more into and take that with you um, how to find people that uh, out of strangers that you connect to uh, and it's actually really easy to do that at conventions um, and going through the whole uh, I'm sh- if I'm shy or I'm intimidated or uh, I don't think there's enough to do on the schedule there's actually solutions for that too um, some of them I just I had to learn just by jumping right in uh, but that, that was part of the fun in fact, some of my favorite conventions were probably put up higher than maybe they really, uh, I wouldn't say deserve, but they were like way more awesome than I think other people thought because I just jumped right in and, and just got very unique experiences from it that uh, someone who's following just the schedule wouldn't right. have gotten. Now, oh, go ahead. There, there's the other thing. I mean, like um, Nick's mentioning uh, the um, smaller conf- uh, conventions or conferences versus the, the really large ones. And I'm just going to say this and throw it out there. Um, I would prefer after having gone to a small one with him and this like fantabulous large one, the smaller one is actually more intimidating because you have a limited number of people around you mm-hmm. and it's kind of like you're forced to communicate mm-hmm. with that specific group and chances are you are going to see them again. She's talking um, of shore leave that she went to with me. Yeah. And so she was it, intimidated by Dave Mack. Really? Who's intimidated by Dave Mack? Apparently I was. He <laughs> sat on my the lap. Yeah. And anyway, the sat on my lap. But the the larger, you know, Attention. going to the larger conference or a convention, there's lots and lots of people there. Um, I didn't really have to worry about whether I was really going to see them again. I could yeah. focus more on just experiencing what was going on around me. You're a, a face in the crowd at a big convention, whereas in a smaller one, you could be the crowd. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I, I, that's a perfectly understandable thing to you. you know, to to think as well. Now, one of the things I think that a lot of new people who've never been to a convention uh, probably need to prepare themselves for especially when it comes to creation events, are things that creation and a lot of other convention organizers don't talk about. And that is the costs, that yes. the secondary costs that are involved. I mean, if there is yeah. a particular um, star that you want to meet and get their signature or to meet and get their picture, or yeah, there's special dinners that mm-hmm. you can do. All of those are typically added tickets, added costs 
Some of them can be very, very expensive. Um, I would say that the average photo op. With a, oh goodness! Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that was Chloe. Yeah, it was. Food, I know that. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, there, <laughs> there are extra costs. And the average photo op at, at at least a creation event is anywhere between thirty-five and forty-five dollars, yeah. depending on the the star. If you want a photo op with a big name like yeah, they're more Patrick, expensive for the big ones. Yeah, like Patrick yeah. Stewart or William Shatner. That's a hundred yeah. bucks yeah. or more. Um, essentially, you know, the you can buy a different kind of seat. You want a reserved seat, which is kind of unusual uh, to have a reserved seat at a convention. I've I've really only seen it with with Creation. Mm-hmm. I I've never seen another company do it quite like that. At most other conventions, you buy a it's kind of like a general admission ticket. And yeah. You kind of have if to, you want to see Terry Farrell and you want to be in the front row so that you're, you know, staring at her googly eye the entire time, you got to get in there. You got to be in line to get in there. So when the last person yeah. put a creation, they have the, the, the gold pass and then the captain's pass. And this, all I'll say to this, if you're a first time convention goer, and we know people like this who have bought the gold package for their first time, right. um, don't be pissing at people who are trying to get a photo either. You yeah. know, don't, ruin their experience because you're you think you're entitled to something it can be it can be a fine line and it, now if uh, somebody's standing in front of you for 15 minutes that's yeah. ridiculous yeah but if they, if big, they take five photos and start to walk away don't give them a hard time it, in and but a reserve seat is a reserve seat is a reserve seat and yeah. again when it comes to like my first convention well the very first convention i went to fell apart i went to it we flew to dallas we spent a lot of money to get there and and they canceled it. Yeah, the, but the, it wound the, up being one of the best times that you could have had. I was, but I was lucky because it was just a fluke of how things happened to have fallen out for me. And yes, I made a lot of really amazing friends that way. And I, but be that as it may, my my first real convention that went off and I went to, I stayed, we went for all four days, happened to be San Diego Comic Con. Mm-hmm. I you know, so my first experience was the biggest convention I had. That, that there really is. I think it was 160,000 attendees that year. And I just felt Janice's whole body tense up. <laughs> no, Janice, you don't want to go there. <laughs> not anymore. Not what it is now. It's, it's horrible. It's really gotten out. Of, and, and I want to say I was probably, I probably attended the last really great one. Because well, you know, and that brings up something interesting. I, I know that look, we have our varying opinions of the the show Heroes of Cosplay. Um, I I watch it, and I, I watch it because I really enjoy some of the people that are on it, not the fake drama that the show interjects. Yes. Um, but like, uh, what are they called? Um, Crab Cat, which is uh, Holly Conrad and Jessica Marzipan, and Chloe Dykstra hangs around with them. They're a lot of fun. And last night after the show. They had a, a, a hangout on Google Chat, and then, you know, where they just talked to about 20 of us that had logged on. And they were talking about, you know, they'd gone to Comic Con for like nine years in a row, back when you could buy tickets at the door. And I think the overwhelming, especially after, if look, it's not the who coming to town. You should be able to get tickets to a convention and then not have to wait nine hours outside of a room to go see a panel or you know, be trapped you're, you're, in one room all with- day. With Comic-Con is that, like, you basically get there and you go, am I even going to be able to do one thing? And right. And the Las Vegas Star Trek convention is a, a totally different example, but... Uh, you're, you get there and you go, oh, can I do all the things in the time that I have? So it's just very different. Like it's my, yeah. very, my very worst different. worries at, at Vegas uh, Star Trek is, oh no, did my can I steam my costume fast enough to go help somebody with their wedding? Um, and can <laughs> you know <laughs> I've got this schedule? Can I do it all? And when am I going to change out of like this costume and go into this? Will I miss my chance to hang out with people, get a drink, and get some lunch? Oh no, the the, the terror. You know, it's compared to Comic Con where now. It, it just, and I've been through pretty much every incarnation of their system uh, since uh, earlier years, um, probably around like early '90s, uh, and it's just I can't do anything now. And I, but I, the only reason that I do enjoy Comic Con when I'm there, if I 
if I can even afford to drive down there now, uh -huh. is that sometimes I have a friend who's working there, they have a room that they're getting free, and they'll share that with me, which I'm grateful for. Um, I've slept in my car before. Uh, and, and then I get to see my friends who work at the booth, so who work there. So there's a lot of artists, a lot of, um, a lot of people there. And so sometimes I'll help them with their booth. Sometimes I'll keep them company. Um, so that's, and it, and I just, there's no chance to really get into the big hall. Uh, they call it the H hall. If I remember right, they still call it. Yeah. Hall H. And that's, and, and, and that's I don't, yeah, that's it. I don't want to go because let's say that they're having, crowded. let's say they're having an arrow, a, a panel on arrow for the next right. season. And that, you know, John Barrowman's going to be there because he's going to be a regular now and Stephen Amell and, and all of them are going to be there. I don't want to have to sit in Hall H for seven hours through. Yep. Now, I'm not going to complain, you know, if the cast of Avengers 2 comes out or anything mm -hmm. like that. But you're absolutely right, Adrian. It's one of the beautiful things about Star Trek is there's so at Star Trek Las Vegas is going from thing to thing back to the vendors room doing this, doing that, you can going to get like, and you're not stuck in that one main room. Right. Except there is an exception though i have to say <laughs> this is horrific is the costume competition experience now i entered it last year just for fun as you guys know and it was not fun at all it was as miserable as anime expo which i had stopped going to for a similar reason and stopped doing their cosplay uh, uh co contest their masquerade for the same reason now i i really love doing skits with people and the last time i did that i think was at anime la with a couple friends of mine and uh and i got to wear a costume that another friend made so not only did i not have to make the costume i got to wear it but i also got to be in a really fun skit with a couple friends it was not really hard to get into the masquerade to the costume contest and uh it, it, it just it didn't take up my entire day and drain me like uh anime expo does and star trek las vegas does the problem is is that they say you have to sign up early like on saturday and uh and then you have to sh so you have to do that you have to be there for that which takes a while you have to be there while they look at every single person so you have to stand in line you're not given a uh, appointment to you know where you can sort of work Work your schedule around it. You, know, you have to like you have to wait there while every single person goes through, and it's hundreds and millions of people. I'm exaggerating. It's millions of people, and <laughs> and you get to meet people while you're standing in that line. That's the bonus. That's the well, bonus. I'm gonna say it's really the only good thing about standing there. Um, and some media people come by while you're standing in line and take pictures of you. You're now a zoo animal because you can't move. No one's bringing you food when you want food or anything. Uh, unless you're lucky like me and Jesse got me something. Um, but that's, that's it. Most people are just standing there going, oh, and I'm like, here, have some of my granola bar. They're like, oh, my gosh, thank you. Um, and it's it's sad. It's, it's tiring. And if you've got prosthetics on, you're not even in the you're not even in the finals yet. You're not even showing it off to the audience who you really wanted to see uh, that that costume. And so your 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 costume could be popping off. Now it's getting wrinkly. You're waiting so long. Um, and then you have to wait and wait. And then they do the the uh, the costume count. The Getty. Uh, the, sorry, not the Getty. The uh, the Guinness Book um, count. So now you're stuck with that too. If you've been trapped in the room for the line, now you're trapped in the room for that. And then you go straight into the costume contest, but then you wait in another line to go up on stage where you stand on stage in really hot lights. Meanwhile, at, by this point, you're lucky if your prosthetics are staying on your face, even if you use Prosade and a bunch of other things. And um, that, anyway, this is my experience. So not everybody has prosthetics, but... And then you wait for them to say who the winner is, and then you get a gift card for creative entertainment merchandise. Well, okay, but the website was kind of misleading it last year and made us think that we were going to get money, which would have been nice because it would have paid for my flight because I'm really oh, Wait a minute, you didn't get cash? No, it was a, a gift card for creative merchandise. And if you've seen their table, there's really not a lot of merchandise. So I bought yeah. some friends things. It was worth it for buying my friends things. But in the course of that whole day, all the way until like 10 p.m. at night from approximately like noon, afternoon, that was my whole day. I lost my chance to have dinner with people, lunch with people, panels, uh, the vendor's room. I couldn't I couldn't broadcast or do anything uh, at the, the Trek radio booth or with any of my friends. It was it was gone. Everything gone. And that's how it feels like Comic-Con is 24-7. That's Comic-Con. Oh, um, wow. So yeah, when you see, get stuck with something, fun. you get stuck. So I don't like that aspect of um, that scheduling aspect of Star Trek, Star Trek Las Vegas. And I really hope that 
that Creation Entertainment can do something different than what Anime Expo has stuck many people with. Now, Janice, question for you. Okay. Oh, I thought she fell asleep on us. Um, because you're shy, you did venture out from our booth a few times and walk around and take pictures and do all of that. Talk about the people that you ran into, like you and the kitty cat girl, uh, the Imrest cosplayer wound up talking, and you actually wound up uh, on TV. Well, I don't think it was really TV. It was just a commercial. That's Tito. Yeah. A commercial for a show that was coming on A and E. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. So why see? Do you all see what I put up with? Welcome <laughs> to my life, people. I just so, see you interrupting a very lovely woman. Go on, Janet. Oh, how dare you! <laughs> I expect better from a Romulan. Okay, well, yeah, I did get away and walk around, but um, walking around, I didn't really socialize a whole lot. And the kitty girl, wow, she was that that costume I really loved. But I made you um, ask to take a picture. Of yeah. us. So I, I basically used my friends that were there already to help me <laughs> do the things that I wanted to do that I was too afraid to. Right on, it's what friends are for, right? Huh. You didn't have to ask me to get you to talk to Dayton. <clears throat> But I met Dayton before. Wait, what? When had you met him before? I thought you introduced him to me before. No. Well, then he just seems like an old friend. That's cool. <laughs> hey, Ward, we're talking. Did we lose Terry? She yeah. might have stepped away for, for a moment. Some beer? But um, <clears throat> one thing about, about this particular uh, the STLV convention is it's it's a huge place. It, there's a, they, they, they schedule a lot of things. So there's always going to be something to do. It's just a matter of whether or not you can bid it all. <laughs> and um, so, uh, did you guys, when you guys go to cons, um, how how do you prepare? Do you like pull out the schedule and figure out every moment of your day, or do you just play it by ear based on you know what what you feel like doing in the moment? How, how do you guys usually schedule your activities? I don't have a usual because I don't usually go, but I had to scope out the schedule to find where all the science stuff was first. So yeah, I we plan everything yeah. around it. We sat down and we went over the schedule, and like she was very excited and she was like oh look this is at eight o'clock in the morning you know or nine o'clock in the morning and i was like well you can come back when it's over and wake me up which that's something we really do need to talk about if you're going to a convention for your first time we need to talk about the sleep factor i mean not a joke am i lying adrian mike janice i, I, I don't no. know what, what i know right they're like what, what sleep? sleep schedule yeah what? okay terry's back um, right what, yeah what sleep seriously um about three hours a night if you're lucky and that's not because – it's because you're having so much fun. And, yeah. like, the first year I went, um, that's actually when I made Adrian because you guys came running up and, like, oh, my God, are you Nick from G&T? And I had no clue who you were. And I looked at Terry. I was like, who is that? And then well, – I know. No, you put and your then, fingers up and made a cross. I was like, it's cool, man. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like to say it started if, if my circle of friends after the first convention was the size of a dime. After the second year, it was the size of a nickel. After the third year, it was the size of a quarter. It yeah. just grows like that each year mm -hmm. that you go right. because yeah. you meet yeah. new people. Like last year with Sue One of Two and Stacy Viceroy and mm -hmm. Cinnamon Haynes. Trek Karen, yeah. Oh, Trek yeah. Karen, right. Love Trek Karen. Darnell. Who, who doesn't yeah, Darnell. love Darnell? And Eric uh, Allen Hall. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Because of cosplay, too. That has incredibly added to it. It's amazing. So, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's Imagine. one thing, though, that I think that you're, you guys kind of um, don't realize. Um, you guys are going to a show and you're really busy because you're you're associated with your show as well as enjoying the convention. True. So, you are busier. Um, oh. And so, you miss the... For a person that doesn't have to do anything, like, I didn't have to sit behind the table. Right? I didn't have to be anywhere. I wasn't obligated to anybody else's schedule except for when Nick said, be here at this time <laughs> or whatever. And I did say it like that. I said, woman, you will be here. Oh, he did not. Or if he did, you kicked him in the nards, right? I'm just kidding. Well, I, I don't kick those because I like them too much. Oh, but. there you go. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be, I'll be back later. Yeah. Priorities here. Um, so <laughs> not having um, any kind of tie or a schedule um, you really aren't that busy unless you plan yourself to be that busy. There's a lot of um, ability to wander and to leisurely look at things.
things and examine them, to observe people, to look at costumes and um, watch all the cosplayers, to take photos, um, to go to your room and sneak a few naps because nobody knows where you are or what you're doing. Wait, what? Did you and do so that? <laughs> I was probably the most well-rested member of the team. That's right. Well, one when of the did things- you do that? <laughs> As Nick deals with his shock and horror, what are the, uh, some of the basic advice that I will give any new convention uh, and, and maybe even some people who've been to conventions before, uh, the convention basics that I learned very quickly is, one, remain hydrated. Uh, carry a bottle of water around with you. Number two, wear very comfortable shoes. Oh, yes. Cos- cosplay or not, uh, if you can't walk a lot in the shoes that you're going to be wearing, do yourself a fair favor. Carry a pair of flats if you're a, a female cosplayer or something. Carry around a pair of flats until you get to where you want to be to put on your special shoes. <laughs> But it's, it's not always possible for a, lo- a lot of different costumes, but I think... Um, if not, uh, I think scooter. <laughs> I know, it's like, well, hold on, you want to take a photo of me? Let me put on my comfy shoes and Let get off my scooter. Let me put on my comfy shoes. Mm. But at least at Star Trek Las Vegas, there is a very long hallway between the buildings where your rooms are and where the convention floor is. Oh, it's is. too long. It is too oh, yeah. long. It's so painful. They need it a is, tram. I would say it's a, it's a <laughs> solid, and I'm not kidding, it's at least a quarter of a mile, half a mile maybe, between yeah. the masquerade yeah. tower uh-huh. and the, the main convention floor, and that's yeah. not even getting to the vendor's room. Yeah, and, so, and you're staying in the hotel. It's still incredible. It's a crazy walk. You're walking as far as someone who's not staying in the hotel, as far as, you know, when they walk <laughs> in, that's pretty much where you get off your elevator from your room, and you're walking and, side by side going, wow. And the vendor's room is still another quarter mile. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a long way. I'll, the, I'll tell you, I was yeah, in a lot so. of pain wearing my costumes. Um, especially, like, yeah. just anything you, with you, you Yeah, your eyes hurt. showed it, too. Yeah. I remember I remember asking, how are you doing? And you just kind of looked at me. You didn't even say anything. <laughs> I was like, do you want a drink? And you're like, please. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Again, was, don't forget to leave it. Yeah, so comfortable shoes, yeah. drink, and, and make sure you carry and, and stay hydrated, um, especially if you're drinking in Las Vegas, that is a um, hand of a norm. Sanitizer. Hand, uh, sanitizer. hand sanitizer. Oh, my oh God, I, we do need to discuss Concra. Oh, yes, yes, Con- yes absolutely. Concra. Hand sanitizer. That is on my list. Yes. Hand sanitizer. Even a small little pocket vial of it is your best friend. Concra, cod plague, con flu, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it, is is not a joke. It's a very it's real, real thing. Like, it's seriously, real. smear Vaseline into your nostrils so, <laughs> so you're protected. <laughs> Well, and the reason we say this is there are so many people there. Right. And when you're dealing you know, with 25,000 people from and you're all shaking over the world. hands and saying hello and mm-hmm. you never. Like Brett Spiner does not shake hands. He fist bumps. And, and, and a lot of, and that's the other thing. If you're getting your, if you're getting an autograph or you're meeting a star and they, and they, and they don't want to shake your hand, don't take offense. Yeah. These people are meeting thousands of people every day and they are totally at risk for getting sick. Yeah. And, and they if they get sick, it can risk their work. Yeah. So, so don't take a personal offense if they don't want to shake your hand if they wave or if they fist bump or elbow bump just go with it and take it for what that's worth um it's hand sanitizers don't get yourself sick uh don't forget to shower at least once a day uh you can work up a, a sweat easily especially if you're in cost and the moment that you're out you know just be considerate to yourself and others and make sure that you do shower Oh, um, B-O, 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 B-O. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Tower, shower, shower. Deep deodorant, because yeah. we don't want to smell your pits. <laughs> <laughs> I just made that. No, you know, I want to do an experiment where I, I walk up to Brent Spiner and I spritz my hands with hand sanitizer and, the, and then I go, now will you touch them? And see what he does. <laughs> He's going to give you such a nasty look. No, he might be like, well, the reason he doesn't do it is because it looks rude if he does it between each person. But if you do it, he'll be like, oh, that's all I ever wanted. Yes, I'll shake your hand. Okay. It's Brent Spiner and it's Adrian. It's a theory. This if is a theory. If I spritz my hands, he's not going to shake it. If Adrian well, 
Adrian or Janice ask. He'll do it. We don't know. We don't know that. It's possible he might if you do it too. But I, I can test the theory. How about like put that put that on my schedule, my list of things to do to to do that, and then document it. Have your assistant put that on your schedule. Okay. And see, and, and because my only real experience with uh, with him at a at a it wasn't even at a convention. It was at a fundraiser. Was far far different because there was only you know, a couple of dozen people there. So far different. Was he in the hot tub with you? No, he was. He he's the one who gave me the name Boots. Remember? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, just saying. You know, the I, other I can't thing complain. too I've is to bring hugs some snacks. Cold divorce, so. Oh yeah. yes, snacks. Snacks mm-hmm. is a very uh, another. Th- yeah. So uh, guys, don't forget. This is the one time you can carry a man purse, no, or yeah. whatever. Carry carry a, a bag. backpack or a knapsack or something. Mm-hmm. Something oh, masculine. Snacks. Speaking of which. Yeah. I, oh. believe, I yeah. believe the lovely Adrian posted about this today. Bring a portable charger yeah. or or a plug or something. Charger, yeah, the little portable charger. Uh, for You can use it for your cell phone, your camera, for a lot of different devices. It is so convenient and it lasts a long time. I had this, okay, so I lost mine. I recently found it. That's why I post on Facebook because I, I plug it in to charge it. I'm like, this thing is dead. It's been, I'm not joking, like probably five months since I've used it and because I lost it. I couldn't find it and I, and I didn't have money to get Get a new one it's, it's a good one so i plug it in and it's got three bars out of five still charged what that's pretty awesome so uh, <laughs> go check it out it's called the energy product placement but it's really cool and um it lasts a really long time uh and i i'm probably going to get a second one because i might need that for documenting purposes or someone else might want to borrow it real quick because we were lucky we had we have a booth so we had yes. the plugs in there but right. if oh, you're yeah. if you're walking around you know yeah. it, you're going to drain and you need the you, you you need that and it sounds silly to people that don't know and when you go to your room have like one of those plugs that you plug in that has like three or five plugs in it because you don't realize how many electronics you take anymore until you travel mm-hmm. it's very and true how many how few plugs there are in those and, rooms amen and not just how few plugs are in the room but for those people who believe or don't understand um, most hotels that do these types of things in Las Vegas right now you don't get Wi-Fi in your room or or you don't get free internet it's you don't like get 10 it. <laughs> It's you ten bucks a day. <laughs> yeah, it's expensive. Yeah. It is. It's ten dollars a day um, to to get the internet in your room. So if you happen to have a MiFi or a what are they, a portable uh, Wi-Fi hotspot, Air Card, uh, yeah, oh, Air yeah. Card, anything along those lines, they'll at least at the Rio. I can tell you that they work good and those work well in mm-hmm. your room. But you may not get such a great signal down in the vendors area. Right. Correct. Um, we had, mostly we had, because they tend to put jammers around. Yeah. So. We had mentioned very, very briefly and it, uh, uh, the idea that, uh, of bringing snacks. It's, yes. Well, well, we can, let's round up and say if you're in the vendor's room, the far end of the vendor's room and you're going to get something to eat, that's like a mile you're going to be walking. <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> so it's true. The idea of, of a nap sta- sack with some snacks is a brilliant idea. So yeah. keep that in mind. And gum. Bring gum help. because you might not have Mints. a chance to brush your teeth between um, meals mm. and you're going to get, you I might get stuff stuck in your teeth or you just want good breath plus yep. also if you're like in a snacky mood but you don't want to keep slamming down snacks because you're burning real quick from running around then just gum makes you your brain think that you're eating so it actually can stem off your stomach grumbling for a little while so i mean that's i, I mean for real, I, that's what i've used and and i've got um, a very picky stomach so i have to be very very patient and try to forget about the pain oh I'm you and me both uh, ever since i had my two surgeries lost my gallbladder yeah. my, yeah. janice is you yelling know. at me to change my diet <laughs> it, yeah, and, yeah. So if you have like acid indigestion problems or ulcer stuff like that, absolutely um, keep the gum with you. Keep some pretzels and uh, try to think of anything else that, that really was easy to keep. A protein bar is good. Protein um, protein bars are and really good. Anything and nuts. In, exactly. Anything else along those lines that you believe are easy to carry, you can yeah. put in a, a purse or a pocket or a knapsack of some kind that's easy, 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 easy to carry and won't weigh you down. And I mean that literally. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's we don't, so much. And let's be a pack involved. animal. Oh, and <laughs> since we are talking about food, let's discuss breakfast and dinner because it's Las Vegas, <laughs> and it can be an issue. It can range from Burger, Burger King, King to, to five star dining. Yes, mm-hmm. and sometimes the only table you can get is no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sometimes you break your tooth on scrambled eggs. Yeah, there, I would highly suggest that um, you know people tend to go to the buffets because they're easy. Buffets are not necessarily cheap in 
Las Vegas anymore. And the reason why is because they need to cover their costs, but also um, they can make money off of them because they if they're in a if they're in a packed house situation and the Rio happens to be off the strip, which means that it's difficult for people to just walk out and go to another place. Um, you know, so the buffets, there's a couple of, um, of, of Yeah, options. so the buffets tend to yeah. be, you know, for breakfast, upwards of $20 mm-hmm. and yeah. for dinner, upwards of 30 yeah. Don't be surprised. I think it's more than that because when Erica Erica O'Connor and I went, I think it was 75 bucks for the two of us for the buffet for dinner. Yeah, so but that was Sunday night. There's options that you can do, though, because you can either bring your own type of uh, – your own food to, to fill the gaps so you don't spend mm. as much, which, I, I mean, leading all the way up to people have brought their own rice. Right cookers so they're cooking their own rice and stews and soups and things in their own room really? um, and adding wow. toppings to it it's actually really easy to do um small rice cookers hardly weigh anything when that's like when you're not like a major cosplayer like i am while well, my cosplay things are taking up all the space if, if i was not a cosplayer bringing a rice cooker would be incredibly easy um but you can you can also put some of your costume pieces inside the rice cooker till you're using it so <laughs> and to <laughs> have as much Space on top of it. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> you can do that. You can bring oatmeal. You can bring um, and dried fruit. Mix the two together. Um, you can bring protein powder and sprinkle that in. Mix it all up. You've got what you need. So there's different ways of doing it from your own room. Ramen, it, it, or a cup of noodles. Um, there's a. There are usually supermarkets uh, or even <laughs> gas stations. I'm sorry. When you said ramen things. or cup of noodles, I know Janice winced. Uh, I did. I'm sorry. It's okay. Well, okay. It, it's survival food um, <laughs> something you know, for some noticed, people. <laughs> right. Something I had noticed was even, even we had mentioned earlier on that um, they, there is a Burger King in the Rio. Now, I've noticed that the, the prices of of, the, of of a meal over at the, that Burger King is significantly more than what, what it is in my neck of the woods. Exactly. So be aware that even though you're thinking it's a Burger King, it may not be your Burger right. King prices. So right. Always it's more like airport mind. Burger King prices. <laughs> I'll, I'll give a couple tips, though, for people who actually want to eat outside of the room, but they don't want to get fried by the heat and they don't want to indulge in fast food stuff, um, I suggest going to the little Chinese restaurant that's inside the hotel. Yes. The reason is, is because you can get rice and yep. veggies super yep. cheap and dim sum yep. is very cheap. Mm-hmm. You can just As long as you, you don't expect dim sum at dinner. Yeah, it's different. But like with dinner, <laughs> you can still get uh, some type of veggie noodles and still a little bit of tea that. with it and you're good. So um, <laughs> I saw the picture of Elio eating dim sum in China and I thought the little bath Bastard had to go all the way to get them. I I have to ask him if he liked like how compare. I'm sure it's better than the um, oh, the it's gotta one. be. But how how, can, how, how much different be? that is? Because Japan yeah. food was totally different to me when I went to Japan. Not yeah. what they have here. Oh my god! Right? Japan. Food. Yeah, it's Japanese it's food is so much better in Japan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and not just because it's in Japan, but it's also just it's the just soba different. noodles are so and the miso soup. Oh, <gasps> oh Adrian so and I could do a whole podcast yeah. about oh, Japanese Oh, don't make food. me hungry. I know, right? Miso hungry. Oh my gosh, it was so good. So, um, yeah, so I don't know what the the Chinese dim sum is. That's mm, well, actually, know. the Chinese have takeout American food, so that's really mm-hmm. interesting. You know, the, the <laughs> hot dogs. You know, an American comes up and says, "You got a penny." But um, I'll tell you well, one of the things I thank you. One of the things I did last year that I hadn't done before Janice and I walked around the Rio. And by walked around, we went in and out of all of the shops and she got some masks. And Janice, what did you think? I mean, that was a lot of fun, I thought. If you didn't have fun, tell me and I know you will. <laughs> no, that was fun. Um, it, it's a great way to get to know your environment. And I think that that is actually probably one of the better ways to do it is to just take some time, walk around, explore, see what's around you. Um, it, Talk to the people. People that work there. Remember the girl at the candy shop who gave us all that info? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. Very true. I, I forgot about that, but it's true that the people who work at the hotel where the conventions are at are going to have a lot of inside info about where it's good to be um, at any given time. Oh, pardon me. And, uh, sorry, I'm drinking no, okay. beer. I can't help oh, it. for God's sake. So, Janice, what else do you want to bring? Because you, you've been kind of the quiet person as the norm. That's all right. Well, no. Next to Mikey, I'm, I'm doing good. Yeah, you are. Yeah, she's Jeez. talking more than I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, something that, that we should be aware of is um, you want uh, if you're from a, a different part of the country, you're going to a desert. You're going yes. to need time to acclimate. So it might mean showing up. That's a, what you a, meant. A I was like, what does he mean, acclimation? Sorry. No, yeah. yeah. Desert. <laughs> it means you have to go to a rock. 
and start peeling your skin off. I live off. in a desert. It didn't even occur to me. <laughs> what? Um, I mean, the air is going to be dry, so if you spend any time outside, you're going to be just go up in a, in a puff of smoke. Dude, you know? it's like it's like Indiana Jones, and uh, you know when the when the uh, the bad guy picks up the wrong uh, <laughs> goblet, and he's like, "This will give me eternal life," and he drinks from the cup, and then he like just just disintegrates. That's what it is when you walk outside the hotel. You just yes. you open the door and you go. <gasps> Ah, it's so, and 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 we're we're going to tell the truth here for those people who've never been. Well, how do we tell people like that? Does somebody have an here? Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up right here. We well, do is have from friends. Australia, so he's familiar right. with the concept of super hot, crazy wild. Weather. There is super hot, but they they also think in Celsius. Hmm. So we're talking pushing 50 degrees Celsius. Are we not? Tell him he's stuck his head yes. 400 degree or not. What he's you're Celsius? Gonna, that doesn't you're work. Be um, cooking hmm. on the sidewalk. You're gonna it, be. It, yes. It, the temperatures For those coming will from Europe be... or Canada or, or <laughs> Australia or whatever, you're looking at 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. Right. At 40 or 50 yeah, degrees Celsius. Easily. Yeah. And and for Americans, who I think are the only people who don't use Celsius, um, are going to be, oh no, Brits don't either. 120, 130. Yeah, it's, it's, um, yeah no, not, one, not 130. I would it hit 130 20, last year. It. it hit 130 last year, two days. In the, in the Valley of Fire. No, yeah. at the pool. Did it? What? Really? really? Yeah. Oh, Cool. Terry, you're cool. also you're yeah. also not taking into account the amount of concrete and everything that's reflecting oh, the that's heat. That's exactly back. it. And with all of those mirror, well, the, the windows are mirrored. Yes. To keep the rooms cool. When so we it met reflects Sarah that Red, sun right back into the pool area, and it just wow. heats up that concrete. It's really hot out there. Yeah. You went so to the pool. That the pools are hot. Wait a minute, what, Janice? You went to the pool? No, I. Somebody came in and they they had just said. It's 130 out there. That's why we're coming in. It was too hot even in the pool. Yeah. Uh, Ew, that's so... Little yes, warm. I went to the pool without you. Evidently, while you were taking a nap. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the, um, be prepared ahead, you know, for, for vastly different climate uh, than exactly. probably what you're used to. So right. whether that means arriving a little bit early so you can get used to, to, to the, being inside of an air-conditioned building and hopefully never going outside. <laughs> 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 and not until uh, it's nighttime. Yeah. Yeah. And even at nighttime, when you're out there and you realize it's still ninety something degrees and the sun is down, that's a. It's a not going to lie. It felt like I was back in Iraq. It, it's a very unusual concept to get into your head that that heat is really there. I'm and thinking because, that there's got to be a joke with regards to the M and M factory being right there. <laughs> oh, I know. You would think the M and M factory would melt. I'm just saying. <laughs> melt your, your mouth, mouth your not your lies. Lies. <laughs> Lies. That's why it doesn't yeah. melt in your hands. <laughs> it doesn't because you're melting. It's just oh, your hands yeah. melting right along with it. It's a so it, it, there is a lot of things to take into consideration if you've never been to the Star Trek convention in Las Vegas. And uh, again, that time of year, it's keeping hydrated. All of those personal health issues that go into it, and that if you throat can lozenge. take care of those, huh? Throat lozenge. You need a throat lozenge. Throat yes. lozenges. That's yeah, remember that's how dry inside the hotel it was with the yes. smoke and other things. And our well, that's oh, where steam good one. Is burning. Smoke. Keep smoke. Excellent point, Adrian. People but can smoke. Terry. In the casinos. I'm so sorry. Not in the convention floor, though. Right. So just be aware that. What are you apologizing for bringing up a good point? No, no. I interrupted no. Terry. Oh, oh, no. oh, it's okay. Yeah. It happens all the time, sweetheart. <laughs> I yeah, but you've got to so. walk through the, the casino area, Mikey. So you got to walk yes. through all that smoke. Yeah, we'll well it's, all cigar, still in, it's all in the it's same building, big. so that that is still in the air. Yeah. Although right, they yeah. scrub it and they've you know, got air purifiers and whatnot, but it's still there. Oh, so. Right. What, what if you get one of those little throat spray things? That's probably the best, easiest way to do it, so you're not just sucking on things, talking to people like, wow, wow. You can just go, and then you're done. To, and, and I'll even go so far as to say if, if you are from the East Coast or a more human humid place and you may have and you have sinus issues uh-huh. run to the store before you leave and pick up one of those arm and hammer um, sprays that you can use it's a saline spray mm-hmm. that you can use in your nose and it helps moisturize your sinuses and trust me trust me when I say they work 
So uh, there's oh, that's a, right. another area too that you guys didn't think touch upon yet, and um, for those people that are like fitness nuts or fitness Nazis that are <gasps> not Nazis, to just exercise. happy people. Yes, <laughs> um, fitness Andorians. <laughs> there you go. Very good. Um, I found that there there was um, limited uh, opportunity per se, so you kind of have to make your own opportunities for fitness unless you want to pay a lot of money to use like a club of some sort. Yeah. Um, All you have so, to do is walk to the vendor's room and back a few times. That's your, <laughs> yeah, but that, it, it, you are getting a lot of exercise, but you're not because you're kind of leisurely walking unless you planned on True. like running or sprinting your way there. Um, but you do see going on through the casino. Right. So I brought um, bands, like rubber bands for my strength exercises. And um, I actually did sprint down the hallways when nobody was really looking. The hallways are really long. Yeah. <laughs> Red alert. Who's going to shout as she's going by? <laughs> yeah. And then, but there's also another alternative. I mean, um, check the fitness clubs that are around you. Um, the national chains like Planet Fitness is one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, they do have a club that's nearby. So it, it's impo- it is possible that you could kind of squeak out uh, a wee early morning workout that yep. way without having to invest extra money. Very true. Uh, should we take a minute to, since we're talking about uh, possible go- going to alternate locations in Vegas? Absolutely. Should we Let's do mention it. like cabs and uh, alternate yeah. transportation? Yeah, because they the Rio is off the strip. Right. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people may want to go out and, and like we did and have in the past. We always went bowling on Tuesday night before <laughs> before the convention. That will not be happening this year. But that uh, I know. But well, you know what? We... we were so rushed last year yeah. that maybe it's good that we'll just get there, and, unpack, and, and have a and nice then, dinner. Exactly. Dinner. I think it'll be fun. Now, Because my... this year I want to take Janice over on Wednesday, depending on what we're doing. I want to take her to see the Bellagio and Paris and New Perfect. York, New York, and all of that stuff on the Strip. Because we didn't get a chance to do that last year. Exactly. Yeah, and, and I'm still th- sitting here going, strip? What strip? Yeah. Yeah, you got to do it. Exactly. You really do. And, um, and, and the Rio doesn't have a connection no. to some of the mass transit options that other chains have on the Strip. Right. Like Bally's and the Hilton and, well, it's not the Hilton anymore. It's just the Las Vegas Hotel. Um, and- Janice, do we need to tell you what the Strip is? Honestly, do you? Are you... <laughs> Are you are you really asking that? No, see, this is what she does, and then I don't know if she doesn't know. Look, he never took it to her. It's not her fault. She doesn't know, Nick. Okay, everybody's heard of the Las Vegas Strip. Adrian. No, they haven't. But not everybody knows what that means. They just a lot of people think that that is what you see when you get there, and if all you see is the Rio, you, you assume you're on the Strip. Oh, that's true. There you Very go. True. Yeah. Or yeah. they think it's something to do with a dancer. Yeah, she's exactly. right. <laughs> Well, the Las Vegas Strip is Las Vegas Boulevard, and it runs from the south uh, down by, I think the first hotel on the Strip is the Mandalay Bay, and it moves... Is it, is it the MGM or the Mandalay? Like oh, Mandalay. No, oh, it is, okay. Mandalay is, way, is south, uh, south of, of, it's like Mandalay yeah, Bay, is. Luxor, Tropicana, Excalibur, New York, New York, MGM, all at that MGM, top. yeah, MGM's across from New York, New York. It's right on Tropicana yeah. Avenue, yeah. but, and, and and, and these are, and every time I, if for people who've never been to Las Vegas, every time I mention a casino, I need you to understand the size of these things. A size of one casino will take up, no lie, a half a mile to a mile on the strip, on the, the length of the, what they call a block in Las Vegas is three miles long. So... Just now, Janice, you know. you've lived you've lived in in the L.A. area and all of that. What did you think that when we first drove into Las Vegas and you saw it from 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 that? Were, was it impressive to you? I mean, all the different architectures and everything. Oh uh, yeah. Thank you for playing. <laughs> <laughs> I so love you, doing but, that but to you, him. Have, you haven't gone to see the uh, the interior of the uh, Venetian or Mandalay Bay. No, I have not no. taken it. Or the, even the, the Bellagio. Uh, the first. Oh, that's the Bellagio, why the first yeah. time I went to, mm-hmm. to Vegas. Vegas in 2005, I stayed at the Bellagio. I saw the inside of the Rio, and I saw the bowling alley. Oh, yeah. oh my that's, God. That's, we got to get her out. pretty much what I saw. Oh, and the yeah. toy store where Mikey was going out of his mind. Oh, yes. But yeah, that that's was a, a great that's toy all store. I've seen, that's all I've seen of Vegas myself. So. Which day are you guys getting there? Tuesday night. Tuesday. 
Okay, I'm getting there Wednesday. So if you don't do any, if you don't do like some big group, like run around to those places, uh, uh, you're on board before I get there, then I can join you. When, yeah, and when are you leaving too? Because when we fly we're out, leaving, what? we actually decided uh, we were able to make an extra day of it. So we're going to be leaving Monday. Okay, and Janice, we fly what, Tuesday? Tuesday. I think yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, you guys fly on yeah. Tuesday. So either Wednesday or Monday. Well, yeah. for, for our listeners who've never been or have not have never been to the strip i would i would highly recommend some of the the lobbies and the and the public areas of some of these casinos are wonders to behold and i'm not yeah. kidding you um oh my god Bellagio New York, New York has insane. one of the most beautiful public atrium gardens yeah. and they change it for the seasons yeah at, for the seasons at least six times a year so it, there's the spring there's the fall but there's also a summer one and they change it a couple of times during the summer and it's these beautiful full-blown gardens with art that hangs from the ceiling it's incredible and you've got dale chihuly glass um covering the ceiling it's it's the insane. world's largest chocolate fountain <laughs> no there is it, it running. i'm laughing because it's like you're thinking willy wonka but you think willy wonka but it's classier than that no it's the bellagio is bellagio is five star i mean and this you know i want to bring this up because i have a friend of mine who lives here in in, in maryland and her and her husband are attending for the first time and they're not staying at the Rio because somehow they were convinced that the Rio was like a three star hotel. Yeah. That and, kind of pissed me off. The Rio isn't bad for for the the price that you pay for a room at the Rio. You get Beautiful. you get a pretty damn good deal. The rooms are big. Feet. The rooms are very big, they're very comfortable, and you get the um the added advantage of being at the hotel where the convention is. The if you stay at the Gold Coast which is right next door. Which Again, just that is reeks a, of old Vegas. It is literally. It is, it is seriously. Dec- it is old Vegas, and we mean old Vegas in a Frank kitschy, Sinatra is playing there in a very kitschy. It, it the whole place smells like old Vegas. But it smells that's like smoke. not to say it's a bad thing. It ha- it has its own it's charm. I'm not it gonna has lie. Its own charm. All yeah. When you walk in, the predominant color of hair is blue, and it's not young girls with their hair dyed blue. Mm. No, and and but they have the best rated. How do I say this? I I subscribe to Condé Nast Traveler and to Travel and Leisure magazine, and the Chinese buffet at the Gold Coast continuously rates as one of the ten best Chinese buffets in the world. Does it really? Yes. We have to go test it out. I yes. think we do. <laughs> and, and but that's that's how they draw gamblers to their hotel. Yeah. And it is. It's right next door to. It's- it's Korea. literally a, a six-minute walk. And, and, and that's only because walk. you have to cross that road. Exactly. You have to go out of the front of the Rio, walk around through the parking lot, ditch through, the, uh, jaywalk. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, but if you're not staying at the at the Gold Coast or maybe even the Palms, which is across the street and tends to be very pricey, you have to get a cab. Who was yes. it we knew that was it was it Chooch? Who was uh, I think it? it was Gingy. It was Gingy who yeah. stayed somewhere else, and yeah. the 10-minute cab ride really was an eternity for him. Mm-hmm. Plus the money that he spent on the cabs, he he said, could have spent on the room two, right. two drinks each. You know, yeah, for, he ended up cab he ride. ended up sleeping on my cat on our couch. My yeah. Couch. Because by the time the night's festivities, like fr- Thursday and Friday, karaoke, okay? Right. How much so fun well is the karaoke? Midnight. Right. And this year, although we're still under a non-disclosure agreement for another Actually, couple of days. No, the Trek, we're not? The Trek movie. No, thing, it's been announced. It has been announced today. So. Oh, it was announced. Oh, today was the yes. day? Today so was our, the our, day. Our embargoes, are, are we off embargo? Yes. Oh, wait a minute. Which thing are you talking about? Are you talking about the band? No, uh, about Continues. No. Star Trek Continues. Oh, yeah. And a theater, yes. The Star Trek Continues is doing a midnight showing of episode three at a local AMC theater. Midnight showing. So that's going to be after karaoke. That's actually in the middle of karaoke. <laughs> yeah, really. Well, because <laughs> uh, Adrian, you sang at like one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it was pretty pretty late. I was going to say it's we pretty waited for it was pretty for late. It sing. gets really tough as I it know. gets. That's later. because her and Trek Karen blow the roof off the place. That is very true. It's really that tough. Is- oh, on that though, that's actually a good a good point we should bring up to everybody listening because they're going to want to know if I want to do karaoke, then how do I not suffer uh, the one a.m. hour slot? Because number one, if you've been drinking your your voice is dry number two you're existing in this convention your voice is dry so right. you you know 
you get to that point where uh, if you had, you know, your nerves calmed by alcohol, you're good, but now you're going to sound kind of not as good as you would have had you not had the alcohol. And if, uh, you know, your nerves were kind of crazy, well, uh, the waiting just makes it worse. So um, what I suggest is uh, an hour before the vendor's room closes over by where they do the signatures, the DJ is there at that area and he has the <gasps> sign up sheet. So get on, get in on that early. Oh. And then you're not there until like 1 a.m. Um, now, I've been lucky that every time I've gone and done the convent, the uh, the karaoke the previous years, um, I've signed up when I got to the, the karaoke. And uh, it appeared that I was getting in fairly quickly into it. It turns out there's other people that had already signed up before me and that if I had waited any longer, I would have not even gotten in at all. So wow. I didn't even know this, like, uh, but I was looking at the convention schedule and um, I remember vaguely hearing about that last year. And sure enough, I confirmed it. So an hour before the vendor room closes on Thursday and Friday, get over there, put your name in, um, make sure you choose a song that's not going to make people like wish they had not just lost all their money in Vegas. And, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't sing very well then then just put a smile on your face and know that we just love the fact you're up there so entertain that's us. right it is the that's most right. supportive crowd and I'm, I'm not gonna lie the worse the singer the more supportive they are that's yeah, absolutely it, it's really the truth. about kind of just the fact that if someone you can tell someone is trying and that they want to be up there then it, it doesn't matter if they sing good or bad you don't care you're just like yes or thank you Klingon. i love you or you Klingon. unite with them or a Klingon mikey rocks the house song. with his Klingon drinking yeah. song that is very true acapella too oh my god Gosh, that was amazing. And I will guarantee you, Janice says she's shy. Let's talk about Mike the, two years ago, Terry, who yep. was with us for what, 72 hours before he finally spoke because he was so shy? <laughs> and that was at your house, and it was only cooking with G&T, which pulled him out of that because we were all snookered. But, you know, by Friday, Mike's up on stage singing Klingon drinking songs. It, oh, it is, yeah. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and karaoke is one of those things that even I was surprised surprised about because I did not realize how integral it was to the convention experience. And if you have the opportunity to come in and be social without that pressure and just have a lot of fun, I would highly recommend it to anybody who's going to the convention for their first time. And Adrian's put a picture of the Starkwood <laughs> Fountain. So I love Adrian. Oh my God. The first when you guys were talking about the biggest chocolate fountain in the world, all I could think of was that meme that I'd seen a while back this is it's the, the bird. bird that flew yeah. into the chocolate what, chocolate what are you doing chocolate stop and it's <laughs> covered in chocolate so the, like, that would be a, a hilarious fountain for vegas <laughs> <laughs> the first year that I went to, to Vegas for the convention, I did not go to karaoke because I thought, eh, it's karaoke. And right. Then I found out, oh, my God, there's like hundreds of people in there. So not the only that, but you get Data singing karaoke. Yeah. You know, if you can get I'd Star Trek, quote unquote, characters end up singing karaoke to you. That is totally different than regular karaoke. Two, two years ago, the Bynars doing Shoop. <laughs> oh, my God, that was awesome. Oh, <laughs> but um, it but was it hilarious it's, it's and they were doing great... it in binar character where one would say the first half of the sentence and the other would sing the other half of the sentence oh, they were crazy. phenomenal well but this year is gonna how be many friends i too, made because... yeah how many friends i made at karaoke alone right again uh -huh. and 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 this year they're doing this thing that we're all kind of like are they bringing it back from the old hilton times and that is cork's bar Yes, yes. What is up with that? What is this? Where did now they're saying, Corks Bar, you want to go where everyone knows your name? Well, that place is our intergalactic watering hole, Corks Bar, a special area of the convention. Right. So dedicated where is this to your relaxation be? and enjoyment where you can sit with friends, have an exotic drink, snack Double. as well as as well as oh do an God. exhibit of amazing authentic props from and items from the television and film production. And there's gonna right. there's gonna be Ferengis there and other characters but I'm yes. curious where did they get those people how did those people find out about this before me is I this, know is this what April and everybody else that used to work there I don't this? know yeah. it says we'll have a continuously running Star Trek music videos Ferengi hosts to hold on to your latinum and other surprises so it's time Star to relax Luka gets come to, to flirt the... with Ferengi Ooh. I know God. and I'm I'm actually quite excited because it, it mm -hmm. seems like they're really they're really spicing up the secondary stuff at this convention and they're really pushing it and 
And you know what? Okay. They're saying it's not about the celebrities. Maybe creation's finally catching on to the fact that, you know, 25,000 people come in to just party with each other. Yeah. Not to say that we don't want to have our celebrities, but sure. sure. (laughs) We we love our celebrities. No, I agree. We love love each other more. more. Yeah, but, and you know, seeing the celebrity talk on stage or or paying to have a dinner or a a picture is very different than accidentally running into one at karaoke. Mm -hmm. True. (laughs) Or... <laughs> bar. I'm sorry, but I mean that it, you should see Nick when he runs by a celebrity and he's like, squee. Yeah. Okay. That's Nicole DeBoer is the only one I squee over and that's because she's Ezra Dex. <laughs> right. But she took the time to talk with you. She, I mean, it, it's more of a socializing kind of thing. Oh, Aaron that, Eisenberg. That's a different kind yeah. of thing. Right. And um, exactly. having to pay for their signature. I mean, not, nothing against that, but I think that it makes the experience that much more robust. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. And, and, and not every celebrity is going to be like that, but there no. are very there yeah. are a lot who who do come mm-hmm. to play. But when McFadden's was there, um, I remember Sir. sitting at yeah. the uh, at the bar at McFadden's having having a, a sandwich. Uh, Terry, I think you and Alan were up on the roof at the at the gold party that night because that was the night I kind of had the the, the 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 breakdown and, and then met Nicole later. But I looked over to my left and two people away is Casey. Oh, Casey Biggs. Yeah, and one I thought well, and Jeff, a beautiful. And Jeff, I, I, pretty much everybody from the Rat Pack. Well, he really was the only one there, right? And he was just eating and he was just like reading the newspaper or something and. You know, my first thought, well, there's a beautiful man. And then, two, he, he looked over and he said, oh, you, he saw my shirt because I had on my Twitter shirt. Right. And he said, you you here for the convention? I said, yeah. And we talked for about five minutes. And that's like – Janice is absolutely right. That is like so awesome because you're going to get that, especially people. with the this, 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 – I don't want to say the secondary actors, but you know what I mean. Not right. the main title actors. Right. It, it, let's face it. We all or, know that the, the people who play the captains are, are – are the headliners. You typically don't see them floating around without um, handlers, um, but there are a lot of Shatner other actors. Shatner thinking we're not going to recognize them. <laughs> but there are a lot of other actors who go because they think it's fun. And Aaron you're Eisenberg's gonna meet a great them, example and you're going to talk to them. Mm-hmm. And the, my best advice to you on that is don't treat them, don't be a, how do I say don't it? Be without dick, being, like El, like don't Louis be a dick. Don't be a dick. Yeah. Be, Tell them you enjoy their you work and then leave it at that. Never knew. Right. How would you you treat somebody or buy them just a drink. Exactly. Oh yeah, if you buy them a drink, you're good. I mean, uh, <laughs> Marie, I, what, last year at the bar. Um, I saw Marina Sirtis and, uh, and LeVar Burton and uh, Ross and I, uh, Gingy, uh, we, we bought him a drink and said hello and, uh, you know, left them to, to talk, you know. Exactly. Oh, well, that one. Oh, respect their way. privacy. Exactly. When you come out of the, the hallway and you're turning, heading back towards the Masquerade Tower, and there's that one bar there, you know what I'm talking about? That's against Gutters. like the left. Yes. 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 You will see J.G. Hertzler and all those guys hanging out with people. Yep. Just it's having a blast. Closest- bar to the convention. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And believe me, they're, they're not going to get upset when you send them a drink. <laughs> and then there's uh, the coffee shops that are in there, but right. there's one that's further away, and that's the one when I get overwhelmed, I go sit at. Well, apparently, that's also where a few of the celebrities go. And um, because I'm not like very familiar with all, all of who they are, mm-hmm. I was sitting down, having a cup of coffee. This person sat down, had a cup of coffee. We had this wonderful chat, and then they, they were kind of stunned because they're like, do you know who I am? And I'm like, no, I don't. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> That's awesome, though, because... I don't remember. <laughs> oh, my God, woman. <laughs> <laughs> the I will love be after that. The show. Male or female? Let's play this game. Is it a uh, male? Uh, okay. Paul? So, uh, do you know who I am? Male. Dominic? Did he have a British accent? No. Okay. Not Dominic. Over forty? Under forty? Uh, probably somewhere Just the in the forties. I mean, <laughs> like Nick's in my age. Blonde hair, gray hair, beard, beard, dark hair, kind of dark hair. Uh, Was it Jonathan? Not Frank? really a beard, but uh, you know, I think uh, you would know Riker, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would he, it wasn't Riker. Riker. I'm wondering if it I was, was going to say. I don't know if it was JG. She didn't know who he was. You know, it could have been. Um, no, JG wouldn't have said that though. That's true. JG yeah, but never would have that, said that. And neither would have O'Reilly. Yeah, or, or I don't think that. Um, oh, for God's sake, Shram! I can't think of his name. Oh, I Jeffrey can Combs. totally see yeah, Brett Jeffrey Spiner Combs. doing that. Mm-hmm. Brett Spiner totally would have done. No, that. she would know data. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I mean, part part of the way the conversation was is that you know, like any conversation yeah. that you have with somebody. So, what do you do? Well, this is what I do. What do you do? Well, this is what I do. And so, you know, like he's telling me what he does. And-
and then he's looking at me and I'm like, oh, okay, that's really nice. And he's like, you don't really know who I am. Uh, well, I know. Who are you? <laughs> I got to wonder if it's really not, cool, um, <laughs> if it's not, uh, who you, Terry, who was it you just said? Jeffrey Combs? Jeffrey Combs. Because the man is a master of disguise. He really is. He's, he's a chameleon. He I am so sad. One Janice of my hasn't favorite. got a chance to see Neverwhere, Never, uh, Nevermore. Nevermore. Yeah, I'm reading well, Neverwhere. Well, we, uh, there are so many unique features that are happening this year at the Star Trek convention with the Nevada Pops, which for our listeners, in case you are going and this is your first Star Trek convention, there are certain functions that you need to pay extra to go see. And this year, the Nevada Pops, understandably, is one of those things. It's going to be an extra $35 if you do not have a gold or captain's chair ticket. Uh, then it would cost you an extra $35 to attend the Nevada Pops concert, and they're going to be doing it's a full 45-piece orchestra that will be doing a um, all of the mu- uh, a lot of the music from Star Trek, which amaze balls. Um, other uh, events that they're of course they're going to be doing the Rat that Pack. won't cut the Rat Pack is free, which is yes. great. So if you've got a general admission ticket, you can just pile into the big room, and the Rat Pack puts on a fantastic show. The Rat Pack is. Uh, uh, Casey Biggs, Vaughn Armstrong, uh, Jeffrey, my friend, Combs. Jeffrey Combs, Jeffrey uh, Combs, Armin Shimmerman, right, and uh, um, Max Grudenchik. Max Grudenchik, yeah, and just really amazing, um, hilarious, it's so, it's so funny. And so there, there are certain functions. Take a look at the at, at the creation site. Make sure you you plan ahead of time and buy tickets. Uh, although for the most part, it, you shouldn't have a, a trouble getting into the secondary shows. Even even day of, you can just buy buy the ticket. But they are pretty strict. If you yeah. don't have a ticket and your wristband doesn't match your lanyard, um, they, you have they will lanyard. find you. Well, yeah, this, well, the general admissions, you know. Right. There are people who watch. With some things, now, they do watch. I will bring up, uh, we, we've talked a lot about like the fun and all of that. Let's talk about if you paid for an autograph and the lines and how bad it was last year. I only paid for one autograph last year and it was was rough because it happened to be um, an, a, a star who was also signing for the gold passport members, the gold, the gold ticket members. So the gold ticket members got to go first. So where I thought my number was 35 and I thought I would be the 35th person in line, I was actually like the 1,000th and 35th person. So I had to stand in line and wait mm-hmm. for that. And that was just for us. Uh, there was for much grumbling. That was for Stephen Culp. Yeah, there was mm-hmm. much, much grumbling about the photo lines last year. So I hope creation learned from last year compared to the year before. And a big piece of advice is if you do have photo ops, constantly monitor where those photo ops are going to take place and when. Because sometimes... If you miss it, if you miss it, you're gone. And bring something to be signed. Yes. Terry, why don't you discuss that in our shot the first year? The very first time I went to a creation event... I had the unfortunate experience of attending pretty much every other kind of convention first and did not realize that you had to bring something for the celebrity to sign. So not only were you paying to have the signature, all you were paying for was a signature. You would have had to have brought your own photo. Every other convention I had been to before, the celebrities provided their own photos. They do not do this when you purchase a an official creation autograph. It should, be noted, to, it should be noted that if the, your celebrity is signing in the vendor's room, then that's typically, different. Yes. yes. That is if, different. If, if the celebrity is signing in the vendor's room, they typically have their own photos that they will sign for you and it's included in the price. But if you're purchasing an autograph through creation, you have to bring something for the celebrity to sign. That and is how two, I got a G&T show business card signed by right. Nicole yeah. Moore. And, that was and, all I had. And do not expect that person to be able to personalize it for you. So if you bring a photo and you say, you know, I said, you know, they won't be able to say to Terry. They will only be able to sign it. They are told not to speak with you and they are told not to personalize photos or personalize any signatures. Now, having Don't, said that. Now, having said that, right. Um, there are when, certain celebrities who ignore the rules. When Andrew J. Robinson signed my copy of his book that he had yeah. written as Elam Garrick, he right. looked at the creation person and he said, I'm not only signing it, I'm talking to him and I do that with everyone who brings my book. 
That's right. Cool. And, and, and and usually, usually, like I was saying earlier, if they're in the vendor's room, the creation rules do not apply. They exactly. do what they want. So that means that they might personalize. They might sit down and talk with you. You know, it's whatever they feel like doing, not what they're told to do by creation. So there is a difference. Right. And 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 G and T show is going to be happy enough to be playing host to Kipley Brown, who 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 was in Star Trek Enterprise, as well as um, when he's when he's around. Uh, we are James Kerwin, and, and I'm not excited about Kipley being there at all. <laughs> <laughs> you need to sound and more monotone. she is going to be, even Thank though you. she'll be selling her autograph for, a, you know, a nominal fee, She, you better believe she's going to be very excited to be she's able to so talk sweet. with you and get to know you and, and, and to thank you. And she's now, so the people who, who sell their autographs in the vendor's room have that freedom that, well, that we they don't really necessarily have. And, and huh? last year we had a really good experience. Janice, um, who up to that point, Richard Hatch had no Star Trek connection whatsoever. Right. Uh, by the by, the third day of the convention, when Janice would walk by, Richard Hatch and his German dentist girlfriend would be like, "Hey, how are you?" <laughs> yeah, we Richard Hatch. Did. For, yeah, Richard Hatch. For those who don't know, was Apollo in the original Battlestar Galactica. In that was such a, a squee nice man. moment. It was yeah. a squee moment, and he's such a sweetheart. And 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 they came has, by our booth too. And he's such a good guy, and you'll you'll find that out. The, there are so many people who participate in the conventions, not just because it, it is an income opportunity for them, but because they really do enjoy it. Mark they Cushman love hanging loves out with the fans. talking to people. They love and hanging we love out talk, with the fans. Talking to him. They, exactly. They, it was, it's a great, great experience and it's fun. And I, um, and I know that we need to tie things up because we're pushing, we're pushing a couple. Of, it's awesome though. And, you know, to, to say, so is there any, Janice and, and Adrian, um, now that we've kind of touched on certain things, are there any things that, anything that you think we missed? I think probably a good bit of advice for tackling the vendor's room is to do a sweep through it first before purchasing something. Good, good call. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of vendors uh, who will sell very similar things to another and some that will have things that you really didn't know you wanted, but you, you want to make sure that um, you know where to put your, your money so you don't miss out on it. So I would um, also say... And last year, um, the, the, the vendors, they didn't have everything set up right all at mm-hmm. once. So sometimes you might have to walk through more than once to see everything. Yeah. I would also say if you're if you're planning on bringing money to spend on things in the vendor's room, honestly, 100% kind of think about 30% higher than that for the simple fact no one that I know <laughs> hasn't said, "Oh my god, this would be so great for coworker, family member, whatever." And wound up getting more than they plan to. And not the least, it's a great Christmas shopping idea that you yeah. can pick up a lot of Christmas gifts there. And because of that, because the vendors room is not just Star Trek stuff. Exactly, a lot of these a lot of these vendors carry other genres, other items. There's uh, costumers there now. There's sword um, makers and sword art, maker, ex- artists. Art, mm-hmm. art, artists. You know, Tribbles. do yourself <laughs> triple. Do yourself a favor. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to pack. An extra bag. Yeah. And on also on that security wise, don't set your bag anywhere. It can be right. snatched up and make sure that you have a bag that you can zip uh yep. yes. or that makes a very audible um opening noise because people can walk by and just Velcro. snatch like a poster or a wallet or even something a phone, something right. from oh, your bag. Allie Mac. There's really Allie, not a ton Allie of Mac. themes yeah. uh, at Allie Star Mac. Trek, but they can exist and they have existed. Mm-hmm. So what Our happens? Friend, especially with when the Our friend Alan Mack had uh, this uh, book from DS9 that he, over years, had collected all these autographs from, <gasps> and he no. went to lunch or dinner or went to eat, and I guess he forgot it <gasps> in the restaurant. And when he came back for it, it was gone. He was far oh, gone. Yeah. I think this was last year. Oh, no. That was how I lost my Stephen Culp um, autograph. I had to go get another one. Mm. So, so the rule of thumb okay. might be to, before you go out somewhere, just drop it off in your room, even if yep. it's a few extra steps. Yeah, every yeah. once in a while, do the room drop, where you just go yeah. up there, drop off any new things you picked up, buttons, posters, cards, exactly. and then go Agreed. back down again. Even though it's a long walk, it's worth 
that so you're not getting tired you're not of not losing hundreds of dollars you're not yeah risking yeah. the yeah your or product priceless memories in mm-hmm. some cases yeah very yeah, very and, true and same watch your cameras so watch all of that and it's easy well, to get uh phones mixed up too because a lot of people have very similar looking phones so just um you know if you have a unique looking case you probably won't have that problem uh it's less likely but uh keep your eyes on that make sure you don't set your phones and cameras near um water bottles and other uh drinks because in the convention those things get knocked over easy because a lot of people walking by yep so. good advice and if you have nowhere to go then the vendor's room is a good place to go True. because you never know what you're going to find that's actually kind of how i ended up in a commercial yeah that's well, right you find cosplayers walking around and only the lego guys that walked around the lego borg and the year mm-hmm. before that the lego yeah. star trek that those are that those moments to me when the lego borg walked by i lost my i was laughing so hard that was awesome oh don't feel obligated to do commercials or shows there are people that will walk by with cameras and say hey can i stop you for a second and ask you a question and sometimes they won't give you a chance to say yes or no they won't even tell you what show they're with and then you don't even know after you do it where you're going to even pop up or you know so just uh if you're not really sure ask them what show they're with um ask them for a card so you can track them down to get your images or to see what's done with them um, yep. and then give That's your permission point. and then yeah. at that point decide if you don't like how it's going even in the middle of it say no thank you and walk away um, or do the old oh my god hello and wave over the shoulder sure. like you see somebody. sure and you know in, in any of us if, whether you know us well or not we will have your back in a second mm-hmm. um so you know, right. find us first at the convention, any convention you go to, look for these people that you hear on these podcasts because we will make friends with you very quick and we will be uh, probably some of the first people to jump to your defense. If you get and if you have a beer, media. Terry will be right there. Yeah, or guide um, you. Like if you want to know so how to best talk in front of a camera, we can absolutely give you tips, oh, yeah. uh, prep you That's or right. uh, stand something with you Adrian, while you do it. So. Something Adrian had touched on. Um, if, you're, <laughs> if you're not with one of these, uh, uh, if you're not one of these, these <laughs> with a, if you're just walking through the, the halls and want to take a picture, most people are willing to do it. Or most cosplayers are willing to take a photo. Ask though. Don't automatically assume, right? Now, Janice, since you're getting ready to go to your second Definitely. Vegas, what did you learn last year to work, to do to get ready and, and to go that you didn't know the year before? Not to panic when you say uh, we'll be there on time. I don't even know what that's referring to. <laughs> What the hell is that? <laughs> when were we late? We were never late. I was just panicking about being late. Remember? Oh, she was. Yeah. No, especially to leave. She was like all a tremble. And I was like, we've got seven minutes. It's fine. She, that, You do learn. The, oh, and that's something, Janice, you touched in your blog last year. You could go through that casino at any time, literally 24 hours a day. And, and you were stunned by how you, you, it always looks the same with people there. Yeah, you lose time. Um, I think there really isn't a whole lot that I'll do differently because I was with a good crew. Um, yeah, you were. Yeah, I think if you're going with friends, um, friends tend to look out for you. Just, you know, use common sense. You know, obviously, you know, you have to wear clothes, so pack accordingly. Um, you know, the extra suitcase thing is a good idea, although Nick knows I like to pack light, so I will try to squeeze as much as possible in a tiny suitcase and let him carry all the over. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he can do it, that's pretty cool. Well, I've got my big duffel bag from the army, my on wheels. So yeah, yeah you, so you know, you, it's yeah. cool. Yeah. Now, for both of you, again, SCLV doesn't have the reputation for this, and and doesn't seem to have the problem. But as females, what advice do you have? Um, and Adrian, I think you know more what I'm talking about with this. Sorry, uh, say that again. What, what was it? As females going, <laughs> STLV doesn't have the reputation that, say, some of the other ones do or, yeah. or have had the issues. But what, for females looking out I, for I females. don't think, okay, so, well, I've never felt like STLV was so crowded that I wouldn't know who groped me. <laughs> Uh, so, Sorry. <laughs> and I and you told me to stop, and I did. <laughs> most people who take my photo ask first. Um, it is very rare someone takes my photo without.
without my permission. And it's usually because they're so shocked right at that moment because I'm wearing, you know, because I'm killing people. No, because I'm wearing a costume or something. <laughs> and they walk by and they go, oh, that's so cool. Snap. And because either or they're on their way to something else and they're just, they're not, that's fine. That doesn't bother me either. I don't think that's disrespectful. Um, it, to me, ultimately, the, the disrespect would come in the form of what someone does with my photo or with uh -huh. my attention, with my person. And I haven't felt abused at uh, that convention. And I, and many, uh, anime conventions I have um, but even so it uh, the more people the more chances for that and that's just because people like to get away with things when it's more anonymous um, right. like the internet yeah yeah <laughs> so now, I will, I will to, to your point about the photos thing um, the first year that I wore the scan two years ago I got to tell you this story this is absolutely hilarious um, Erica O'Connor and I had met and we were hanging out and you all know who she is right she used to be Holly Hearst yeah okay and and she's, let's face it, she's gorgeous. She's a model, okay? And we were walking, and we couldn't walk five steps without people asking for her photo. And she was always obliging and everything, and everybody always asked. That, you know, there was not even the taking of the photos from afar thing. Well, then I went and put my scant on, and she was laughing at the change because everybody was stopping me and asking for a photo of the guy in the scant. And, <laughs> yeah. and she just thought that was the greatest thing in the world when a group of uh, the, 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 the cheerleaders came up. You know who I'm talking yeah. about from the oh, restaurant? Yeah. Yeah, start and they were like, oh, my God, we've got to get your pick. Sure. <laughs> and she just thought, but yeah, it's true. People do generally say, uh, you know, can I get this? I think, Adrian, I think I saw one person was so shocked that Dar Schluga was standing behind them. They were like, oh, I think Eric Allen Hall gets it a lot as the Borg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's, it's uh, well, if, and for the people who um, might be listening and might be attending, uh, the G&T show plans on doing a, a kind of an audio and video project this year called So What's Your Story? Where we're going to ask people who are attending the con to come in and talk with us at our booth about what made them a Star Trek fan. And we're going to record them. But we, we have, have questions lined up already. We don't have our questions lined up yet. But okay. we I have, but I do have the release lined up. So I'm going to, you know, we're going to be doing things more legitimately and making sure that anybody who sits down with us knows that, you know, we're not going to abuse their image, but we are going to get their permission in writing before we post it because we are going to be using the internet and we want to respect them in that regard but you know we don't make money at the GNT show that's for sure yeah. but god no <laughs> But we do want to make sure that, you know, we have written permission from them to be able to, to use their voice and their image uh, before we post it uh, beforehand. So it, it's just a matter of respect, yeah. I think. I think we've um, had a lot of good examples in the community. Um, agreed. And, and a good ideo ideology. So that has made for a lot less uh, incidences with regards to disrespect and uh, abuse taking right. advantage of people. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, I think we got a lot of great. Yeah. Amazing uh, information. A lot. Thank you very much, Adrian and Janice, for joining us. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. I I'm always happy to join you guys. You're a blast. <laughs> we miss you. Yeah, we Can't are. wait to see you. Very soon. Yay. I'm looking forward to all you guys. Thank you, guys. You again. <laughs> thank you, Janice, and thank you, Adrian, for joining us. Uh, for this week's G&T Supplemental Log. It's uh, an amazing two hours packed full of convention information. So thank you, ladies, again, so very much for your time because we know that it, you know, you, you're you both very busy. So thank you again. And I would love to do this during the uh, the convention as sort of like a mid-convention, mid, mid -convention, uh, how's everybody doing uh, recap. Consider it, consider, consider it on. Stop yeah, by Yeah, that would be so much booth. fun. Yeah. That would be oh, great. The booth and or in a room. I actually, I really enjoyed that podcast summit that we sort of, that was fun. That was we put awesome. together that first yeah. year. That, uh, that was very fun. We have, well, let's see what Lisa and David have cranking for Trek Radio this year. Yeah. Maybe we can, uh, maybe we can get something together and have another podcaster summit. That would be a blast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm down. Yeah. yeah. Sure. One more thing. When, if you go to Vegas, when in doubt, the Rio staff is extremely helpful. They very are true. true professionals. Mm -hmm. And, and they like the Star Trek convention. They so really there's do. a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a great week. Nick, do you want to take us out? Uh, God, wow. yeah. Terry? <laughs> Bye. That was the Terry snort. Janice, Adrian, anything? Um, Bye. <laughs> no meow on the way out? Can you give us a goodbye meow? Meow. There you go. Joe Montreux. Joe Montreux. 
Music for the GNT show is provided by Warp 11, Grethor, Five Year Mission, and Andrew Allen's Smooth Federation. GNT show is a busy little beaver production.